Not only did she engage in what the Sixth Circuit called an end run around Congress to retroactively reduce the sentence of that fentanyl kingpin I mentioned earlier, she also worked to strike down a Trump administration order expediting the removal of illegal aliens on equally specious legal grounds. The law passed by Congress granted the Department of Homeland Security, quote, sole and unreviewable discretion, sole and unreviewable discretion to decide which illegal alien should be subject to expedited removal. Nonetheless, Judge Jackson inserted herself to strike down what she called, quote, a terrible policy by the Department of Homeland Security. Well, I regret to inform Judge Jackson, it is not her role in our system to decide whether immigration policy is good, bad, terrible, or any other adjective she wants to use, only whether it is lawful and authorized by law. And of course, the D.C. Circuit Court, which is not exactly a hotbed of conservative jurists, agreed and reversed Judge Jackson's, de Judge Jackson's decision, noting that there are, quote, could hardly be a more definitive expression of congressional intent than the language in that law that she disregarded. But Judge Jackson didn't care. She had an anti-Trump op-ed that she wanted to write in the form of a judicial opinion. Judge Jackson has also shown real interest in helping terrorists. Now, it's true that you shouldn't judge a lawyer for being willing to take on an unpopular case, but you can certainly learn something about a lawyer from the cases they seek out. And for Judge Jackson and her friends in the liberal legal profession, these cases were not unpopular at all. Judge Jackson represented four terrorists as a public defender, one of whom she continued to represent in private practice voluntarily. And she voluntarily filed multiple friend of the court briefs on behalf of terrorists while in private practice. To make matters worse, she apparently didn't even bother when she was representing these terrorists. She didn't bother to establish a reasonable belief that what she filed with the court was factually true. Three of her four case filings were identical, word for word, comma for comma. She alleged identical facts and legal arguments in each case. The only differences between the briefs were the names and the case numbers. In every one of those cases, she claimed the terrorist had never had any affiliation with the Taliban or Al-Qaeda. And in every one of those cases, she accused the Bush administration and American soldiers of war crimes. And who were these supposed innocent victims of American war crimes who, according to Judge Jackson, had nothing at all to do with terrorism? No siree. Nothing at all. Well, one of her clients designed the prototype shoe bomb that was used in an unsuccessful attempt to blow up a passenger airplane. Another planned and executed a rocket attack on U.S. forces in Afghanistan. And a third was arrested in a raid on an al-Qaeda explosives training camp. Yet in every case, she claimed that none of them had anything to do with terrorism. Not a thing. Totally innocent, just goat herders who were picked up by marauding American troops. You know, the last Judge Jackson left the Supreme Court to go to Nuremberg and prosecute the case against the Nazis. This Judge Jackson might have gone there to defend them. 